Hello and welcome to Newsmaker. For much of February, Indian markets worried about the fall in the shares of the Adani Group. And for much of March, we are worrying about the bank collapses in US and in Europe. Uh, they are threatening to look like an action replay of the Lehman crisis, actually. Today, I have with me someone who can speak with authority on both these problems. Rajiv Jain, promoter, CIO and portfolio manager of GQG Partners, the fund which bought 15,446 crore rupees of Adani Group stocks on March 2nd and ended the hemorrhage in those stocks. Rajiv, thank you very much for joining me today. I'm tempted to ask you about, uh, you know, the current uh, uh, banking uh, uh, crisis, but uh, I'm going to start first with Adani and then, of course, the current problem. You know, when I uh, wrote to you on March 2nd for the interview, you said, no, you have to first speak to your investors. Now, who are typically the people who invest in your funds in which you have bought these Adani shares? Are they sovereigns? Are they, uh, uh, you know, widely held funds, HNIs? And what did they ask you on that day? Yeah, it's 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 good to be here. Uh, so we have a, we have a very sort of a wide variety of investors from sovereign wealth funds, but also a lot of pension funds, uh, mutual fund investors who invest ten thousand dollars in some of our mutual funds in in US as well as in Europe and in Australia. So it's you know we have over two thousand institutional clients. So it's it's extremely broad uh, uh, array of investors who you know who who have money with us. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, and, and, and the more the important question, question you asked yeah. was, what, what, what did they, they ask you? Yeah, yeah. So, so I think I think um, the key aspect. By the way, a vast majority were actually pretty thrilled because they said, "Look, that's what we pay oh. active managers for. Uh, active managers are supposed to take active risk, obviously with calibrated, you know, sort of in terms of the weighting and and doing our due diligence, etc. But but one of the big concerns a lot of our manage uh, our clients have had is that. A lot of managers simply sticking or hugging the benchmark, uh, which is not exactly why you, you know why you get paid active active fees for. So vast majority were actually pretty happy. Obviously, they were sort of very curious what what we found was the others had not. So I think the the discussions was around that. And and to be clear, the Australian trip was set up, you know, four months in advance. So it has nothing to do with this. But I think I think it was a very good opportunity to talk about how we think about investing and uh, and, and and differentiating versus other you know other managers. Oh, they were thrilled with the investment. Now, you know why I am a little surprised? Because look at the other investments you have, you know, Pet Petrobras, Vale, or even the Indian stocks, SBI, NTPC, even ITC for that matter, uh, um, uh, SBI. Now, these are all not stocks with the kind of value. I mean, Adani Enterprises, for instance, let me take just the big stock. E even at the price at which you bought, 1410 was uh, 12 months, uh, uh, you know, trailing 12 months, about 78 times. It's not a typical stock you buy. So it didn't surprise your investors, the, the complete outlier in terms of P.E.? No, 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 not really, because if you look at our history, we have owned a lot of times very high multiple names. Uh, and, and the reason is because the question is where the earnings going to be five years out, right? So uh, uh, we used to own Hindustan Unilever at 40 plus times earnings and, and, and so on and so forth. So and a lot of names outside India. Amazon was a fairly high multiple name for a decade that we owned it. Uh, but I think I think the real question is the way we try to think about it is is where the earnings are going to be uh, in three to five years. And from that vantage point, some of these businesses are actually primed as the capex begins to stabilize a little bit. The free cash flow generation is going to be much more like hockey stick, we believe. So the, the, the question, not the P today is, but the question what the P is going to be four or five years out. And that's why these names look very attractive. And by the way, the, the same analysis you could have made for a lot of the, uh, the new industry, uh, the, the, the new tech, so to say, like Zamaro type names. I mean, you're really looking at what the addressable market five years out is and, and what the earnings are going to be. And on that basis, actually, they look very attractive. But addressable market for Zomato is very different from the addressable market for an infrastructure stock. I mean, India has power. By that logic, you should have bought Tata Power some years ago. I mean, <laughs> uh, is it uh, infrastructure has only that much returns? Because as you go lower down the queue, there are not people who can pay a great deal of money for one unit of power. You know, Mumbai, some people are able to pay 11 rupees and not even charge that much per unit. But as you go down, which is the new uh, power consumers, 
most of the discounts are not even paying properly because they are supplying to people who cannot afford much. So is this argument that you will get such huge multiples so convincing? Yeah, because because I think I think see first of all you have to look at the what is the capital expenditure today and and how they're depreciating those assets. So when you look at some of these assets, the maintenance capex is very low. For example, if you look at Adani Transmission, there is almost no maintenance capex. But if you look at the capex plans that they have versus let's say Power Grid, which a name we like quite a bit by the way, and we do on NTPC as said, they are by order of magnitude greater than those. So when these assets are depreciated at that fast rate the initial earnings get depressed and the capex is very high so because it's the india is not it's, it's kind of a unique uh, you know stage of its development in terms of the the utilities and from a utility perspective there'll be a lot of privatizations and also uh, there'll be opportunities to selectively buy assets i mean if you look at for example the value creation you said adani enterprises about uh, the mumbai airport the value creation has been dramatic. I mean, we are still not talking about the monetization of their real estate, the the the, the second new the, the new airport that is coming along. And I'll give you one data point. If you look at um, uh, airports of Thailand, uh, what is that trading at, and what is Mumbai Airport trading at? And I would argue that Mumbai Airport, over the very long run, has had much more headroom than, uh, than, than 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 airport of Thailand because the location of the airport itself. So when you start monetizing those things. The value creation could be pretty significant, but obviously it doesn't fit your traditional low PE, um, you know, sort of parameters. But I think I think that's 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 a disconnect we believe here. Okay, I, I'm just persisting for a bit more because one investor wrote to me this question uh, a few weeks back when this transaction was getting done. See, he wrote, and he's a fairly big investor. He writes, Adani Enterprises' pre-pandemic market cap was around twenty thousand crores, and even if you were to add a very generous value of 50,000 crore, that is double the value uh, that GMR got for its airport business, we will still be short of the one and a half lakh crore, that uh, 1.55 lakh crore that your uh, market cap valuation was. So, I mean, what valuation are you giving? What multiple are you ready to give? I mean, this, yeah, is, a, so, okay. this is his so, question. Let's talk yeah, let, let, I mean, let, let, it's 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 a common sort of question that that we have been gotten is how do you, how do you what, what has changed in the last two years? So if you look at, for example, uh, the value that that uh, Adani paid for the airport, you have to remember that was sold almost in bankruptcy. Things don't sell at full value in bankruptcy, right? Or or Reliance Infrastructure wasn't exactly sold at full price, right? If you look at uh, SoftBank Energy, it was basically sold for a song because they couldn't run it. I mean, they had. Uh, 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 solar assets not far from where Adani had, and they couldn't run it. So look, I mean, I think the real question is, what are these assets worth three, five years out? So if you look at breakup value in a bankruptcy, of course they would look cheap. But uh, airports of Thailand is worth $30 billion, by the way, $30 billion. Mm -hmm. okay. We would argue that the whole Adani infra, uh, 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 enterprises, you, you, if you take a five-year view, that itself might be worth more than the company itself, one, one asset. And we're not talking about six other airports. We're not talking about other, you know, the coal assets, so which, which generates over a billion dollar probably of free cash flow. And there's room to expand. And look, the, their coal cost is running at forty odd dollars. Look at the way the thermal coal cost is. I mean, look at over even after the price has come down by half, you look at over two hundred dollars. So I think I think I think when you start adding value over the sort of few years, the, it'll take time. Okay. Um, the, it, 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 some of these ind assets individually are worth more than the business itself. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, let me come to uh, the other aspect. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of breaking news, and uh, one of them is uh, uh, one of the charges against uh, the uh, Adani stocks was that many of their non-promoter, you know, so-called public uh, shareholding funds are invested entirely in uh, Adani or overwhelmingly. Okay, 95% in uh, Adani stocks. Now, one such stock, uh, Elara, Elara India Opportunities Fund, uh, news was just breaking a week ago that they are also co-promoters in uh, one of the defense units along with uh, the Adani group. Now, uh, do not your investors worry when such news breaks. What if SEBI were to take cognizance of it? Uh, after all, they have been asked to investigate. Look, I mean, I think, I think I don't want to go into specific allegation because, they are, as you know, there are 350 pages. We'll be here for five next five days to go through each and every one of them. Most of it is all rehashed news. I mean, it was reading like FT five years ago, not exactly yesterday. Number number two is 
I think the what we need to. This Elara news is Elara news is fresh news. Sorry. The Elara uh, as a co-promoter in the defense unit is new news. Now, what I'm saying no, no, is I that, that but, but, I mean, you know, some of this is rehashing. It's also new news that Sebi is. No, it's also new news that Sebi is been asked by the court to investigate. So, I mean, I'm don't look, investors I'm, I'm, come I'm, back I'm to sure you worrying about these things? No, no, I, I understand that. But the question is, are there? What is the context of these allegations? The context of these allegations is: uh, uh, was there an intention to defraud investors? Or was it a little bit optically problematic, and that's hence been sort of cleared up, or is getting cleared up, right? So if you, if you go back to the Reliance, uh, and and I remember in the 90s, the allegations were remarkably similar, but the context was it still created a ton of value for the shareholders, right? So I think I think I think I think if this intent is to defraud investors, that's very different than the than 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 so optical uh, stuff, which kind of looks messy, but. But the intent isn't to, at, at least that's our understanding so far. Look, we, we, we will stand corrected if that's wrong, because we have no access to all of this, um, in, you know, in terms of, I mean, you, 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 you're getting the same news as we are getting. So, but uh, I, think, I think we had to zoom out and look at the context of what is happening here. And what is happening here, we believe, is these are remarkably good assets run by an extremely competent investor, uh, uh, you know, a, a promoter. I mean, if you look at Adani Ports, that wasn't, I mean, nobody was bidding for that when they first got it. That's actually, and why did they get Mumbai Airport? Was it because of the flourishing or because of the bankruptcy? So I think, I think, I think we believe that under this, uh, you know, uh, group, some of these assets could actually flourish. And look, by the way, we did a lot of work on, on the coal mine assets and the Carmichael mines in Australia. And we were actually surprised the resistance they got. And despite that, they delivered coal a year and a half ago. That's actually a remarkable skill set in our view, because at the end of the day, delivery matters, right? What do you create value for shareholders? No, I, I take your point that uh, execution and delivery uh, uh, creates value. But there are also some minefields here. And I'm just wondering if your investors ask you these questions. You know, the, uh, what if one of the related party uh, uh, allegations are proven right? SEBI will come out with its uh, uh, report in two, uh, two months or less than that. Does that worry you or your investors? Look, our, our, our job is to worry about everything. I mean, if, if, if you don't want to worry about anything, stop investing, right? I mean, uh, are we worried about credits is going under and the impact roll over banks? Are we worried about elections next year in India? Are we worried about that? That's our job. So the question is, what is the risk reward that you get and how you handicap that? There's no perfect investment. The, I mean, if you look at, for example, I'm, I'm picking up some of the names that we owned before, Nestle India or Hindustan Unilever. At the valuation that they have, if you, if the growth slows down, what is the risk there? I mean, one of the oh, 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 actually one of the, our investors said you could lost seventy five percent Facebook with everything looking perfect. So it, it, that's that's investing. Okay. No, uh, did you speak to anybody, anybody in government or regulators for comfort no. before taking such a big no. uh, uh, investment call? No, look, I think it, it'll be unfair on our part to ask them. It'll be unfair. It'd be sort of wrong on their part to answer before the investigation happened, right? So we did not reach out to any existing regulator. We did talk to some of the former ones who, you know, uh, who, who are sort of free to talk about it, um, yeah. but but not the existing regulators. By the way, that's not just our style anyways. In fact, we you try know, to you, do our own due you know, to the CNBC and see whether we can yeah. get a reasonable sense of what's wrong and what's right. Okay. No, when, this, when CNBC interviewed you, uh, CNBC US, you said that you had spoken to uh, one of the bankers and they said we are even ready to lend them uh, even more. One of the bigger bankers. Was that an Indian or a foreign lender? Well, it's actually both have said that. I mean, DBS has said that in the, in the public conference call, right? I mean, DBS Singapore. But uh, okay. in this case, we've talked to one foreign and one Indian banker. Okay. We talked to okay. Total, for example, right? I mean, you know, uh, we talked to some of the other partners and, and it's remarkable. Not one said there's a fraud. Uh, see, that's 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 the disconnect here. I mean, we, they, they, I understand there's a political connect, uh, connotation to it, but I think we feel look, there's always um, uh, the, the the opportunities are created when there is some cloud in the air. Otherwise, why would things sell off all their own? There's always has to be some issue out there for markets to react the way they react. Okay. Uh, well, I'm I'm compelled to take a, a break for commercial reasons. Back in a jiffy, uh, Rajesh. Uh, sorry, Rajiv. A few more Adani questions and more banking questions as well. Back in a jiffy.